glad you're here to join me for our beautiful Tula Pink Butterfly Quilt hosted by the Texas Quilt Barn. We are gonna have so much fun. The, this block, section seven, really is a very quick sew. It only has three blocks and one of them is half square triangles we've already created in previous sections. So two blocks plus some half square triangles and we are ready to go section seven. In addition, if you hang out with me a little bit longer today, we're also going to be making the center body part of the uh, butterfly quilt. Um, it is a fast sew as well. If you remember teeter-totter, if you can do that, you've got the body for your uh, beautiful tulip pink butterfly quilt. So come on, let's go get started. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into our first block for section seven. We're gonna be making the small wheel. And uh, the small wheel, I know, made some people kind of crazy last time, but um, it's gonna be okay. You've had a couple months break, so <laughs> here we go. Okay, and if you remember, um, we're going to start, we're gonna, we have, this is our outer piece, our inner piece. So we have the middle section. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna sew our two middle pieces together. So I um, want to, let's see, which do I like? Do I like that on top? Hmm. I might do that on top. Okay, so anyhow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the machine and we're going to sew um, these two pieces together. Uh, and uh, once we've done all of that, we're gonna come back and start adding in the middle section and then do the outer section last, if, if that makes sense. I think the inner section makes sense because it goes right there and then the outer section, it'll be easier. So let's see how it goes, okay? So here I am at my machine and I'm ready to start sewing. Got my leader ender in place, my quarter inch uh, foot with the guide, that's gonna be really helpful to me. And I'm just gonna run these four pairs of um, quarter circles along, sewing that accurate quarter inch seam. Now I'm ready to go ahead and add the inner piece to my middle section. So probably a review for you, but let's kind of take a look at that, okay? I'm going to take my um, inner piece, my little quarter of the circle, and I'm gonna fold it with the wrong sides together, and I'm just gonna give it just a little finger press right there. Nothing, just enough so I can see there's a little bit of a crease, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my piece, my middle piece, and I'm gonna lay where I had that finger crease right there on top of the seam line, lay it right there. And then I'm also gonna make sure that the point points down and lines up with the seam line as well. Because sometimes, I don't know why, but I kinda get off a little bit and I kinda wanna go wacky and it points to the left. Don't ask me why, it just does it. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little nip with my pen right there just to pin it together. And then if you remember, we're going to come around and we're going to uh, take, we wanna match this edge to this edge. So we're just gonna take it around and we're going to do like that. Okay, and I'm gonna hold it, and while I'm holding it with my left hand, I'm gonna take a little bit of a nip here. And I like to take a double, a double dip. Maybe I'm thinking ice cream since, you know, who doesn't love ice cream, right? A little double dip right there, okay? And I've got some fullness, but we'll work that fullness out in a little bit. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing. I want this straight edge to line up with this straight edge, so I'm gonna pull it around this way and let me change hands just because I can hold better and pin, I pin with my right and hold with my left. That's just kind of how I, how I do it. Okay. And I'm going to, again, take that double dip. Now, obviously it's most important where the quarter inch seam is, but I really want the whole thing to line up as best as I can. So there, I'm just going to reposition it just ever so slightly. It's a little fiddly, but you've got this. So take your time, take your time. Okay. Now this time we have this straight piece. It's going to be kind of tough to you know make it all work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, my scissors and I'm just going to do some little tiny micro, um, snips right in here. Maybe an eighth of an inch. I mean, I don't want them to be too long, but I definitely want to take some micro um, snips right in here on the full piece, not on the flat piece, but on the full piece, okay? And then I'm going to do it over here on this um, other piece, the solid. Okay. Just a couple little snips. Okay, now I have enough 
may be enough. I'm, what I'm going to do is let's turn it over and see. I feel like I have enough just by putting my finger under there, my index finger, and I can kind of scooch up the fabric. Very technical term there, scooch up the fabric. I'm just going to take little tiny nips, uh, little tiny little clips right there with my pen because this is the side I'm going to be sewing from. The flat side, this small side is going to be on the bed of my machine, and this side is going to be um, where I'm uh, sewing. So, Okay. And now do the same thing on this side. And... So I'm just some, I'll do it and I'll start in the middle just because that'll help me make sure I have the fullness on both sides. And then I'll pin ever so, let's see if I can scooch that up there just a little bit. And I can take a, a snip here, just a little, I said snip, but I meant it, just a little clip right there. And I don't want to, <laughs> don't want to snip any more than I have, that's for sure. And then here. Now the cool thing is, is when I go back, go to my machine and we'll sew it together in just a second, I'm taking a quarter inch uh, seam allowance as I'm, as I'm sewing, I'm sewing with the flat side down and I'm gonna work with my stiletto as I get around, um, if I need to pull any fabric in or if I need to move some you know, to the edge or something, that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, the pins all kind of look a little wonky, but it'll be okay. All right, we're gonna repeat this with all uh, the remaining three wedges and then we'll go over to the machine and do the sew. Okay, just double checking. I'm very happy with the way it looks. It looks like a porcupine kind of sort of, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. So I'm laying the um, inner side down on the bed of my machine, and I'm gonna start running this around. I'm gonna, when I start sewing, I'm gonna run it around on the edge of my quarter inch foot. Now, just, just something to keep in mind as I'm running this around, I'm gonna take my time. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna rush. And as I get to something like a little pucker, what looks like a pucker, I'm just gonna work that fabric and help help it lay as flat as it can so I won't get a lot of um, uh, puckers or tucks on the front side. So let's, let's see how this goes. I'm still using that 2.5 inch stitch length on my RFL 2600. I'm undone, undone my first pin very carefully and held tight with my left just in case anything moved. I haven't made any seams yet or any stitches yet, but let's see how it goes. There we go. It's under the foot now. Okay, so I'm just going to watch that fabric and, and kind of work it as it goes. I'm not tugging because um, I want my fabric to line up oops, as best as, it, as, I, as best I can. Okay, and I'm just gonna, oops, I moved my fabric. Not not good stage, not good. Use my stiletto to kind of get it back in place. Lay that fabric flat, it'll be fine. Sometimes you know how it is, you do the best you can and then you think, oh, really, really? <laughs> so here we go, keep going. I'm gonna take, I just took one sti stitch and then I had to pull a pin, so. I don't like to run into those pins. I can see my fabric is getting a little uneven right here. So I'm going to hold with my left hand and hold that uh, my quarter inch circle down and see if I can use my stiletto to move my top fabric over, which I was able to do. Okay, pull a pin. Okay, I'm not seeing any gathers in my fabric. That's a positive. Okay, one or two, just one or two stitches and then I'm, I'm on to taking out the next pin, which is fine. And now that I'm getting here to the end, I definitely want to move my fabric and I want to take out that pin and hold it with my left hand as best I can. And let's see what happens as I come around that and let it just, I take my time. I'm doing turtle mode, so to speak, as I'm sewing that because I really want it to come out well. So let's take a look. Okay. When I'm done, it looks a little, let's see, it looks good. I, let's see. I'm, I'm not, I'm not unhappy. Okay, I'm going to, it looks like, oh, no, it looks good. That's where, no, maybe not. And no tucks, no, it looks good. I was just looking to see because it looks right there. Maybe when I press that out, it'll be fine. But remember, we're going to press these, uh, press the seam towards the larger piece, right? So when we come to press that, it looks a little wrinkled right this very second, but I feel like once I press it out, it will be just fine. So I've done this once. I'm going to do it three more times. And then um, after I'm done that, let's meet back at my, um, at the piecing table. <laughs> okay, now it's time to add the outer piece to our 
uh, inner intersections that we've already got the inner pieces inner not intersections but inner sections <laughs> oh my gosh it's kind of crazy around here today okay what we want to do I'm gonna scooch these pieces over move them out of the way put that one right there what we want to do is we want to attach it like this that makes sense right but you're like okay how's that gonna happen so what we're going to do is we are going to um, line up this piece this piece onto our outer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the outer piece and I'm gonna line it up right here at the top the little pieces and I'm just gonna do a little again another little finger press nothing nothing special right now what I'm gonna do as I can still see that finger press, I'm gonna line up the um, seam allowance right here, the seam I've got, I'm gonna line that up, and then I'm gonna flip it over to make sure that the points, for the most part, like line up. It doesn't have to be super like crazy, but I just wanna make sure that they line up, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin, take a little, take a little dip there, and now flip over, back over to this side, where I have the two points pointing down. And what I wanna do is I want to take this edge and line it up on the left-hand side of my inner wedges, my inner pieces. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I will just take a little scoop, and I do double, double on this side as well, just because I kinda of like the security of it. And then I'll flip it around, and I'm gonna do the short edge along the long edge of my two inner pieces and I'll take another scoop okay and now I've got to figure out how am I going to get because this is going to be the piece on the bed of my sewing machine just like this the smaller wedge was this is going to be the piece I've got to figure out how to get all this fullness so just like before we're gonna go ahead and take some snips. Just on the, the top piece, the mineral piece, just take some little snips, not big ones. I feel like this, adding this piece is much easier than the inner piece. Um, but that's just my opinion, you know, you just, you do you and do what makes you happy. So I'm gonna continue to take those little baby snips like I said, like an eighth of an inch. I certainly don't want to cut enough to where I'm going to actually, you know, get in the way of my seam allowance. That would be really bad. And I just, I take snips all the way because I want to make sure I share that fullness, right? Okay, now that I've got it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fabric from below and make sure that I, I have it up here on top. And let's see, maybe I'll flip it over. Oh yeah, flipping it over helps. Okay, now when I flipped it over, I can have this piece, uh, my solid, I'm right now I'm working on my solid. This is gonna be the piece that's gonna go on the bed. I'm just taking my fingers and just kind of working that wedge till the fabrics line up right here. I just want them to line up along the, uh, raw, the raw edges. And then what I'm gonna do, if I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a pin and just take a little, uh, just take a little nip right there. And then I'll do the same thing here. And I don't feel like it's, I've got more fabric to work with, so I don't feel like I have to pin it near as much as I did on the smaller ones. But you, you, you work it out and you see if you feel like you do, if you need to take more. Now I've got it and you can kind of see how the, the snips are kind of um, spread out just gently. They've eased themselves just to give me enough uh, room to take the snips that I need. Okay, I'm gonna do that one. And now, look, start having my little porcupine here, right? And I'll do the exact same thing on this side. And I will, I just kind of want my edges to line up and spread that fullness out. Then I'll work my finger here to the middle and just kind of give that a little pin right here. Oops, thought I had it, but I didn't. Grab my fabric, just a little snip, a little clip, find it. And then I'll find, and you can see as I pull it apart, I can feel just gently. It's a gentle tug, nothing, nothing. I don't want my fabric to fray or I don't want to get too crazy on myself. There's that one. And then there's this one. That looks pretty good too. Okay. Now, once I'm ready and I have um, all four of my pieces done, I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. I'm going to lay this flat piece 
on the bed of my machine and I'm gonna start sewing and working, making sure that I have no pleats as I'm sewing around. But as you can see this time, I feel like it's so much more forgiving, this larger piece than the inner piece. So uh, I'll go take it over to the machine. I will sew along this edge. I'll do all four pieces and then I will go press all my seams just like I did on these ones, I will press it towards the out, towards the outer piece, not, not in, but press them out, if that makes sense. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So pretty. Okay, let's go make this happen. Okay, I'm ready to start getting my fabric under the needle. I just want to make sure everything lines up as good as it can be. And again, I'm, I'm kind of sewing slow because I really don't, I want these to come out good so I don't have to do them, rip out any seams if I can help it. And so just a little turtle mode is good. Those little clips sure do help. Those little snips that we made in the, in the mineral fabric really helped. I feel like that's really looking good. Take your time, lift your presser foot if you need to reposition your fabric. Use your hand to smooth out any pleats or tucks that you might be getting in your fabric. <laughs> Move those needles out of the way or the pins out of the way. Okay, let's see, I'm kind of holding with my stiletto so my fabric doesn't move, but I can still smooth, use my left hand to smooth the fabric if I need to. so good nothing too crazy happened and that's a good thing right <laughs> do you love these colors every month I ask you that but I really do feel like they they are so yummy so fun see that's a little bit over move that out looks good I'm coming up on my last pin. I'm going to take that up, but I'm going to hold with my left finger because I don't want my seam allowance to get off right here at the very front where I've lined everything up so carefully if I can help it. And turtle mode, and we're off. Okay, let's see what it looks like now that we're done. Remember, we're going to press the seam out, so let's just take a look. Oh yeah, isn't that pretty? Okay, only three more to go. We can do this. Woohoo! Now that I've got all four subsections sewn, I'm going to go ahead and start laying them out. And what I want to do is just make a circle, the inner circle, but a square on the outside, right? Okay, looking good, looking good. Okay, now my job is to take these four pieces and I want to, uh, I'm going to sew two of them together. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll flip the top row together and sew those, and then I'll flip the bottom row together and sew those. Then once that's done, I will sew the two, the top half to the bottom half. So I'll do that off camera since we've done this before, but I just do want to mention that we do have an intersection here and an intersection here as we're sewing the top sections together. We want to be uh, mindful of those two. Okay, and then as we're sewing the bottom section or the top, this whole row to this row, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. So just something to think about as you're sewing. So you want to take your time, do some pinning, make sure that you uh, have everything lined up like you want it to be. And uh, when you're done, you do want to square up your block according to the directions on page 18 in our book so that you have, oh, well, that's not page 18, I'm sorry. <laughs> Based on the, well, let me see, I have to figure out what page we're on. It's going to be based on, the, oh, sorry, page 14 in our book. So you want to make sure that you square up your block and then you'll make one for the right side and one for the left side. So this will, like I said, this is a review. We've done it before. I think the trickiest part was just the curved seams. Take your time. You'll be fine. Um, and I'll see you back once I have them all squared up. And here she is. Isn't this a beautiful block? Love, love, love these colors. I think it's just gorgeous. I'm super excited. I feel like my intersections came out pretty well. 
and nothing to complain about. So I'll go ahead and do this exact same thing. I'll do a second block for my, uh, for the other side of my quilt and uh, my wing and I am ready to go. Looking great. Keep it going guys, we've got this. I love this intersection block. It's gonna be so much fun. So you'll have your main street you have your two side streets, that's gonna be fun. And then um, this, uh, this intersection block literally only has two colors, which is kind of interesting. We have our, our cornerstone, and then we have the, the um, hexi. I love this hexi, it's so beautiful. You have that hexi, so that's gonna go there. Let me kind of scooch it out a little bit so you can see it. That, and then you have that one and that one, and that is literally all you're gonna have for that. Once, you, once you're once you done and you piece that, which I don't think I need to show it on camera because we've done it so many times. I feel like you're way comfortable with this. So um, you'll do four for this intersection and then you'll also do four for the other block. And then once you do, we'll come back together and we'll talk about how to finish constructing the whole thing. I think you've got this. I don't think this is anything that's um, earth shattering for you, but we'll still do it because Hey, that's what we do. <laughs> Just for a little refresher, um, remember that you're going to attach the your uh, triangle or your squares to the uh, side streets. And then once they're attached to the side streets, then you'll um, go ahead and piece the this left unit to the to the main street and then your right unit to the main street no uh seams to match up or anything just be really careful that you are taking time to make sure that all your blocks are square and um, that each of your smaller units um, me measures based on what the instructions are for the intersection blocks so you want to make sure those are accurate before you attach them to your side streets so i'm going to go ahead and finish piecing this and then we'll see what they look like when they're all done both my intersection blocks are complete. That was not hard at all. So now, um, because we already have our half square triangles left over from uh, previous sections, we're ready to start piecing this whole um, block together. That's going to be so fast. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm so excited. We're already done with section seven. That is super crazy awesome. Okay, here we go. Um, we have two large blocks that we're going to piece together, our intersection block and our small wheel. So that, as you can see, has no um, intersections that we have to be concerned with matching up. So so an uh, intersection will be to the right and the small wheel be, will be to the left because this is our right hand. You know how I always jump to the right hand side first, okay? So I'm going to scooch this over and let's start talking about the order of the, of the uh, half half square triangles because these were left over from previous sections. So that's positive because we don't have to do anything special. So we'll lay our first um, half square triangle down, our second half square triangle. We'll have a third half square triangle, a fourth half square triangle, and then a solid, which will go right here, okay? And then once we piece all of those together, we can piece them next to this unit because in the end, they'll end up being the same. Once they're all pieced, they'll end up being the same length as that. So literally, um, there is nothing, I don't even think, um, yeah, and there's no seams to match. There's no, th these don't match up, match up there. So there's no seams to match at all when we're piecing this thing together. So I'm gonna go piece my um, this strip together and match it to this, and then also this complete unit to the small wheel, and then that complete unit to the intersection block. So let's go do that, and we'll see what it looks like when we get back. And here is my beautiful right side of section seven. So now I wanna go ahead and start thinking about how I wanna lay out the left side. So I'm gonna start uh, taking the various pieces and just laying them like we have every, every month while we've been working on our blocks and just kind of laying them so that they match. Okay, I'm gonna lay them down. And then as I lay them down, um, I just wanna double check the orientation, especially these half square triangles, cause you know, <clears throat> that's a little tricky, right? Sometimes if you, sometimes it, it, it can get off and you don't even notice it until you've sewn it all together and you're like, no. <laughs> okay, now I have my other intersection block, so I'll lay that like that. And I have, oh, no, face down though, right? That's right, face down, not face up, face down. There's my intersection block. And now I have my um, small wheel and that is that. And now I'm ready to go ahead and piece this whole thing together and section seven will be complete. But hey, 
don't go away because after this, we're gonna go ahead and start sewing the main body that goes in the middle section between our left and our right wings. We're gonna sew that together today too because since this was a fairly easy sew and pretty fast, I figured that would be a good time. So uh, don't leave me, hang around for the next part. So I'll be back in just a sec. So here is the left side of my section seven, all complete. And then here is the right side of section seven, all complete. That was a pretty fast sew, y'all. I'm impressed, very, very cool. Okay, you ready to move on to the body? Let's do it. Now it's time for us to go ahead and start working on the body. And we're gonna be doing option B, the one that is multicolored. Um, and it's kind of like a chevron, right? On, on the body of the butterfly, the center part. Because we have the left wing, we have the right wing, now we need the body. So a couple things that you're gonna need while you're doing this is um, you'll need the multicolored stack of fabric. I think it was like a, maybe it was an eight by eight, something like that, uh, whatever the stack was that came in our in our bundle. Um, I, the both, both times I've made this quilt, um, the order that the fabric was in is the order that you uh, need it in. But if you're not sure, you can always refer to the back of the book. Um, there's a color key with the different solids. Uh, also to your supplemental guide will help you so that you know which, you know, which one to go to. But um, you're gonna need a, um, uh, two marking pens, probably one for the darker fabrics and one for the lighter fabrics. And um, and the only thing I would say to you is um, number the, the fabrics in the back of your book, starting with number two, because number one is going to be the white paper. That'll be number one. Then the first color would be number two, three, four, five, six. Number those because that will go along with the um, color key on page 11 in your book, okay? So as you can see here, I have numbered, like on this uh, purple, I've numbered it two, and then three, four, all the way down, and when I got to 11, obviously I needed to have a light color. And then um, number uh, 12, or the background is this one right here. So you only have one through 11, this is one, two through 11, and then the background fabric, okay? so. Now that you have that and you know what, what's what, and, you, and this is kind of a color key because this, this is what I have left over after I've cut all mine, and I'm going to keep it like this and kind of set it aside because I want to be able to um, refer to it in case I get something out of order or I mess something up because, you know, that could happen. Okay, so now my job is to go ahead and use a marker to mark the uh, each of my squares. So I'm going to, um, because this is a dark fabric, I'm gonna go ahead and lay my ruler down, uh, at one at 12 o'clock at the very top and one at six o'clock at the very bottom. I'll use um, a clover white marker for this part right here, okay? And that'll be one. It's kind of hard to see. It takes a second for that to show up. And you do want to really stay organized during this part because it, it could be pretty easy, I would think, to get off. So, you know, just kind of... Uh, be a little patient with yourself. Draw the lines, um, be as accurate as you can. Don't forget to leave a little mark for the barrel space on your um, on your pen when you're making those diagonal marks. So that is my fabric number two. And now I'm gonna go to fabric number three. And I could use a dark pen or I could continue to, to use a light pen. Either way is fine. You do, you do what uh, works best for you. I'm just gonna continue to use you know what I've got and, and make my marks. And I'm gonna do this all the way through all of my squares, whether they are the whimsy background, whether they are the white background or they are the colored uh, squares. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, take a few minutes to mark up all of my squares. Take it, uh, take your time, you know, listen to a podcast, maybe an audio book, maybe a favorite TV show that you have, but just take your time. And then once you're done, like I said, stay organized though, because you don't want your fabrics to get out of order because you always want to keep them in this particular order. So let me go and draw all my lines and um, I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> now that I've got all my fabric marked, um, on the squares with at the diagonal, it's time for me to start assembling each of the flying geese that will make up the chevron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my fabric number two. So that's the first one in the chevron. I'm going to grab my fabric number two, all three pieces. I have two uh, squares and a rectangle. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whimsy fabric and I'm going to put those, those are going to go together here 
on this one. And they'll, they'll kind of, I'll sew them on just like that. And then I'm gonna take the, um, the solids that I have and I'm gonna grab a, whim, uh, a paper, the white paper rectangle, and then I'm gonna put, take my two purples and put them there, okay? And, th and they're gonna go like that, okay? So, and then from then on, I've already used my square, so I can't do anything more with that. So that's what I'm gonna do with number fabric number two, okay? Now, let's go to fabric number three. Fabric number three, I'm only going to use the paper pieces. So I have squares and I have rectangles. So obviously with this rectangle, I'll need two squares and I'm gonna make a flying, flying geese on this one. And then with these two squares, I'm gonna take a white paper square, a rectangle, and put the two squares they, uh, on the opposite ends of each one. Now, the only thing I'll say about this is be really careful um, because uh, when you put these, when you wanna make sure that as you're working, that you're looking at the right side of the fabric, because if you do it on the wrong side, um, well, that's a problem because, you know, you want to make sure that you're actually, when you flip the fabrics, that you're looking at the correct side. So I would just say, be very, very careful, especially with your paper pieces, that you've uh, marked the correct piece. You want to make sure you make, made sure that you marked the, you, the, you marked the back side, not the front side, okay? So now I'm ready to go to my machine. I'll start with these, uh, with fabric number two. So I'll meet you over there and let's go work on that. I want to start sewing my flying geese, but I can't use my quarter inch foot because of the guide that's on the side uh, and it's not necessary for this particular um, block. So I'm going to switch to my regular presser foot and then I'll go ahead and put down my um, leader. Okay. And now I'm going to, I have my two, these are the first two uh, chevrons that I'm going to be doing for my uh, flying geese, the center body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whimsy blocks and I'm going to just scooch the right one aside for just a second. I always start with the left and I try to try and be uh, consistent. I always start with the left side of the flying geese and then move to the right side. So I'm lining everything up and once I've got everything lined up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, start sewing and just like before when we made this block if you recall we sewed just to the outside like one thread maybe one whisker whatever whatever um comparison works best for you but we just want to sew just barely to the left of the line that we drew okay so i've got my fabric all lined up everything looks good and i'm going to start sewing and i'm not going to take it fast because i'm not interested in going fast i'm interested in accurate well I guess that was my foot that fell off back there. What do you bet? <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Okay, I'm gonna keep going and I'm just taking my time. I'm not in a rush. Okay, and now that I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and um, this is just a review. This is very similar to when we were doing the teeter-totter, if you remember. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the quarter inch, so I have a quarter inch left on the outside, so I'm trimming the outside, correct? Okay, and I'll scooch that to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll press my seam open. I can either use my, uh, my seam roller or I can go to the ironing board. In this particular situation, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my seam roller because that makes it a little bit more Time, time, timely for you and for me both. Okay, so now that I've got that, and you can see that it landed right in the corner, and I landed right in the corner simply just because I took time to line everything up. It had nothing to do with anything other than I did that. Now I'm gonna start again, and I try to start in the middle of the flying, uh, in the middle of the block, the flying, flying goose, the flying geese. I try to start in the middle and work my way to the outer corner. You can do whichever way works best for you, but that's what I try to do. So um, now that my seam has been pressed open, again, I'm gonna, now this time on the right side of this block, I'm gonna sew to the right side. I'm sewing to the outside, the part that's gonna get cut off. I'm gonna sew one thread, one whisker, one whatever, whatever measurement works best for you. I'm gonna sew one just, just to the outside of the line that I drew. I'm taking my time. I do want it to be as accurate as I can get it to be. And I sew all the way off the corner 
Ta-da. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and we're, we're going to clip off the leader. We'll clip off the outside piece. And as you get going, you probably could chain piece. Like, I think what I'll probably do when I get to the next one is I'll chain piece like one color set. I won't go like a whole bunch. I'll just do like the dark purple or the light purple or the pink or, you know, I'll just, I'll try to do one set at a time just so that I can be more efficient with my, with my time. Okay. So this is going to be the very, very top because this has got the whimsy fabric. Okay. So now I'm going to set this one aside with the scraps. I'll set this aside, scooch it over there. I'll go give it a good press when, I, when I'm ready, but not quite this very second. Okay, now I have the two pieces of the, um, the dark, but they're on top of the paper. Remember we talked about that? Okay, so I always try to start with the left-hand side, like I told you. Make sure everything is lined up. I'm making sure that the, that the right side is up on the, the rectangle, because I'm going to be sewing um, the solid to it. And there's really, it's hard to tell if there's a, a right or a wrong. Now, I'm going to sew to the outside. Since I'm on the left side, I'm going to sew one thread to the left and I kind of wish that I had um, drawn a darker line because it's a little challenging to see but we'll see how I did I think my next one is gonna be a little bit better but Trim off the outside. And the interesting thing about this block too is there's only enough fabric from this uh, with the colors, the solids that they gave us to do one pass. There's not enough to do, like there's no oops kit or no, not enough leftover from anything to, to do this. So I guess maybe that's maybe why they saved it at the very end. I don't know, or maybe why, I, you know, some people saved it at the very end. Okay, so now... I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay the other purple on top of my white. And I'm gonna line everything up. I can see it sticks, uh, the purple on the top sticks up a little bit so I know everything's not lined up correctly. Take a minute, make sure I'm good, make sure I'm happy with it all. Looks much better. Use my leader because that really does help get my stitches started. This white line is much darker. I need to just be more careful about that, but definitely. And we will be using um, a clover marker next time as well uh, when we're working. Next on um, section, I want to say section eight, we'll be using um, a lot of dark threads. And so um, my machine's telling me I'm running out of thread. <laughs> so it's only going to let me do a couple stitches at a time. So embarrassing. But that's okay. At least I have that so that I'm not sewing without <laughs> actually sewing anything. Okay. All the way to the end. And I think I got off because I got distracted. So let me see. I think I did not. I did not come out all the way at the end. So, so I ran out of thread, and I had to re. I had to re. Uh, I'm going to restitch because I'm not necessarily happy that I just got distracted with everything. So I'm going to start like a little bit in because I feel like my first couple sets of stitches were fine. I'm just going back over it, but I'm kind of trying to stitch right between the white line that I drew and the line. And I can see, and I can see right here, let me point that out. I can see that if I keep going in the direction that I am, the point is exactly, and that's where I'm going to come out, and that's what I want. So it's fine. I mean, you know, everybody, everybody has challenges. This was just mine today. No problem. Now, the good news is, is that that's not a big deal, because when I cut this off, I'm not, and I'm actually not going to rip any of those stitches out or anything. When I cut those stitches off, watch when I cut this fabric to the right off, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna press this open. Look how beautiful that is. It came out beautifully, right? Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna, and it, it, it's not a problem that I had those, those stitches there. It's not gonna be an issue because when I go to press it open, you'll never even know. Let's look. Okay, so that's my fabric number two. And that's gonna go, and look, that's gonna go right, and I begin, I've begun my chevron, because now I have 
the solid in the middle, and then the solid is the wings. So the next one I'll do, I'll do the solid in the middle, but I'll have white, uh, the white pieces, and then I'll have uh, the, the uh, solid in the, well, let me just show you, <laughs> because this is what the chevron looks like. So let's go, let's go to the second color, because this one had the whimsy and the paper. That one, that's at the very top of the body. Let's go to color number three, okay? And color number three, I'm going to, like I said, I'm always gonna start on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna go ahead and line up my fabric. And I start with my solid, because that's gonna be the one I need. And I'm gonna start in the middle. And I can't find my leader ender right this very second, so let me just use a scrap that I just had happened to have still sitting here from when I trimmed. You ever had that? <laughs> it's all good. Okay, and because I'm sewing on the left-hand side, I stitch one thread outside the mark on the left-hand side, just to the left. Okay, now this is the, I was talking about chain piecing a little while ago. Let me go ahead and line this up because these are gonna be the, the wings. So I had the, the body before, and now I've got the wings because the big rectangles are the bodies, right? And let me go ahead and run that up here. And I'm still to the left, so I'm just gonna do one thread to the left, or one stitch, or one whisker. Looks pretty great. Okay. Now, use my leader under. I'm going to cut the outside off. This was the first one. So because I used a white on this, I'll also want to use a white on the other side. Let's open this up. Maybe that's a little too close. What do you think? I'll back it up just a little bit. That way you're not kind of going, what? I didn't realize it was so close. I apologize. Okay. Now, because I had the white on the outside, I want a white on the right side, because that's a white, right? So let's take and I'll line up those corners. Oh, so careful. Let's just start, get my leader ender going. Lift it up, I place the, just, oops, I wanna go, since I'm on the right side now, I almost did it wrong, I'm on the right side, so I wanna make sure that I'm on the outside or to the right of the line that I marked on my fabric. So let's go that. Take your time. Not quite turtle mode, but close to turtle mode. Okay, that's that one. Let me change these to this one. And you can see what the two look like when they're with the white behind it instead of the paper the whimsy. I love, love, love this. Yeah, that I, I was really so impressed when I opened up the package and every time I've done it, the fabric, the uh, order of the body is in the correct order. It's kind of nice because you're like, oh, thank goodness, right? You're like, I don't have to guess which one or try and try and figure that out. Okay, there's my line. It's not super dark, but that's okay. Do you ever wonder why people kind of trace over them just to make those dark, those lines really dark? I guess I should have done that, but I think it'll be fine. And I'm hoping that you have one of those clover pens at home, the white ones especially. Okay, um, to the right, so I'm on the right-hand side of the line that I drew. Everything's lined up. Starting in the middle, I think, is a lot better. It seems like when I start in the corners, um, I get a lot of turned up edges and uh, it's kind of a little wonky. So I would just suggest to you that maybe that's something you could consider. Okay, now, move those out of the way. Let's see what this is gonna look like. So you can kind of see, so we're just gonna kind of do this as we work our way down the body um, with each of the colors. Just get those pieces, the white rectangles and the white squares have them ready and you can just start working your way. Chain piecing, I, I would suggest, like I said, just chain piecing um, one set of colors at a time so that way you don't get 
off. But if if you're comfortable doing more than that, you you have confidence. That is not for me to say to stop you. You do you, because you're gonna you're like to yourself. Section seven was easy peasy. Oh my gosh, we moved so fast it wasn't even funny. Okay, there's the wing part. Okay, and now I've got the body part. Okay, here we go. How does this look? So now I've got the body and the wings. So this would be the top. That's your first color. This is your second color. Let me scooch it over. Ta-da! Okay. You're going to do all the colors as you work your way down, and then we're going to start to piece. So let's talk about piecing these flying geese together in units, as if, as if they're just like one you know, the, the colors that would go together. So the body with the wings. Okay, so I'm going to flip the um, wings up on top of the body. And then I'm going to line it up and making sure my, my seams are open at the top, which they are. Let me show you something that I think is going to be super helpful for you. Oops. You know what I really need, though, on this one? I really need my, um, my quarter inch foot because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my quarter inch and when I get to here, I just want to make sure that I sink my needle right here in that intersection where the, the Y is, where that purple and white is. I sink my needle and keep on going. So um, I think you know what I'm talking about, but let me go grab my quarter inch foot and <laughs> rescue it from the back of my table here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got my quarter inch foot on now, so I'm going to go ahead and start my leader. Perfect. And now I will line up. I've got my quarter inch foot. I've got it lined up. Everything looks good. It's moving along. And all I'm going to do when I get to this part of the intersection is just make sure I'm at my qu accurate quarter inch seam. And I'm going to sink right in the middle of that intersection right there. Let's see how it works. Judging. I think I did it. And the one thing I will say when I'm coming to thinking about pressing these blocks, I know we have been very consistent uh, about pressing our seams open. Uh, well, hopefully you have. If you haven't, that's okay too. But in this particular situation, I am not going to press the seams open. I am actually going to press the seam up. Because when I press the seam up, as you can see, that's a piece of fuzz right there. As you can see, when I press up, I get a really accurate point. If I open up my seam, sometimes I've got, I've got a bunch of bulk back here, several layers of fabric. Sometimes I feel like that causes me to lose some uh, the point on the front. Now, maybe not on this one, because it still looks pretty good, but um, on the first one of these, the first butterfly quilt that I made, I pressed the seam up and I was it was very successful. It was beautiful. I didn't have any problems. And so my recommendation to you is to just continue to press your seam up. And if you'll notice on the side over here, once you've got that seam, See how you got your quarter inch right there? So as you're sewing, as you're going, let's see. Well, I guess you know if your seam is open, you'll be able to see that Y, right? Hmm. Well, let me go try that and see. Let, let's see Let's see what, what a pressing open does versus pressing it closed or plus pressing it up. Let me see what that looks like. I'll be back. All right, I'm ready to start my third color in the chevron. Uh, for my body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my white rectangle and I'm going to get my two uh, squares and I'll grab the third color which is number four in my color palette uh, that I've got numbered, number four. Okay, I'm going to match the squares up with the white rectangle and I'll match the white squares with the number four fabric. And now I'll go ahead and go sew all these together and like I said I always try to start uh, by lining it up here uh, and doing the left hand side first then I do the right hand side and then I'll do the white bo um, body with these will be end up being the number four those will be the uh, wings okay so you'll continue on down uh, with you know with the white until you get to number uh, I think it's number 11 once we get to number 11 we won't have any more um, solid bodies, so we'll have to move to this whimsy fabric. So I'm just going to go ahead and tuck that back here with whimsy because we're going to need it back here. So I'm just going to tuck it back there so I don't lose it. So anyhow, you're going to want to work your way down all of your fabric in this manner 
take your time. Um, it's just a process. I do think that pressing the seams open was just fine. I feel like the bulk is okay right there in the center. I did keep my point. And the reason I think that it'll be a good thing is as I'm sewing the wings together, as I'm sewing the wings to the body, I'll have, uh, I won't miss my point because I literally will have it uh, right there and I'll be able to see on either side. So pressing your seams open like we always have is a good plan. Looks pretty great and uh, work your way down. I've got each of my sets of flying geese sewn together. So for example, here is my uh, very first, my fabric number two sewn with the whimsy at the top. So that's two, three, four, five. There's five right there. Now I'm gonna move over to, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 and 11, okay? And you can see on my 11, I've got this um, other piece of whimsy, okay? So now what I'm gonna start doing is sewing these units together so that I have units of uh, two flying geese. So these two will get sewn together and these two will get sewn together and these two will get sewn together. Once I get everything pieced together, then I have, oh, I know where it is over on my ironing board. I have the other piece of, of uh, whimsy that goes here. This is the long piece that goes here. And then there's another one that goes above my number one and two unit, okay? So I'm gonna sew those on and I'll have, basically I'll keep adding them all. I wanna make sure I stay in order though with my color palette. And basically I'm just gonna go one, all the way to, uh, I'm gonna go, what is this? This is number two, fabric number two, fabric number two to fabric number 11. And then I'll add my long pieces and I'll have my entire body center stitched together. I'm really happy. I, I think that uh, pressing the seams open is gonna be very helpful, like I said, for when we sew uh, onto the left and right side of each of the butterfly wings. So um, I don't think you can go wrong. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I will flip this up and I'm gonna clip it so that I know that these two go together. And then I'll flip this one up so that I know these two go together. Grab a pin. Yep. And then these two, and, I'll, and, and so on until I have all my pieces. I'll, I can reorder them once I've got it ready to go. But the good news is, is that I'm like inching so much closer to finishing the body. And it really wasn't that hard, was it? I think it's gonna be awesome. It's hard to believe, but we are done with section seven and the center body. This is the body, it looks so beautiful. I've kind of got it uh, here positioned. It's not sewn in yet. I just kind of put it here so that you could see what it sort of will look like. It's not identical because my pieces come together in the middle. So, but this is kind of what it's gonna look like. I couldn't add section seven because there's almost not enough room for you to see <laughs> here in my sewing studio. But this is the um, right-hand side of section seven and it'll go all the way down towards the floor here in my sewing studio. So that's why I'm holding it for you. So you can see this is section seven, the right-hand side. We have done a beautiful job. I am so proud of us. I find it hard to believe that we have done so much hard work in such a short amount of time. And yes, we only have two more sections to go and our quilt is completed. I couldn't be more proud of us. You guys are awesome and I hope you've had a good time uh, sewing with me and uh, maybe had a few laughs with me along the way. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave those down in the comments below. I do respond to every single comment. I'm happy to help you in any way I can. And uh, I think that's about it. I look forward to sewing with you next time. Only two more sections to go. Until then, bye y'all.